Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Off-Grid Hunter. So today we're going to be uh, making buck jam. And uh, for those of you who are watching this, you're probably interested in scents and attractants and things like that. And uh, you will be more than familiar with buck jam. It's on every major uh, uh, sporting goods uh, chain store, Cabela's Bass Pro, uh, all those uh, big retailers carry it. And uh, basically, um, there's a few different flavors or scents. Apple and Acorn, I think, are the two most popular. But today we're going to be making the apple buck jam. Now, when you get uh, looking into this stuff, I've done a lot of research in the last couple of weeks here on it. And uh, really, at the end of the day, all it is is uh, salt, sugar, and a powerful scent that uh, the animals really like. And in this case, what we're going to be making today, apples. So um, I'm just going to show you what the ingredients are. It's very simple to make and uh, there's a reason why they call it buck jam and it's because more or less it's a bastardized version of a jam that you would find in your fridge or the grocery store. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what the ingredients are and uh, we'll start making this. Okay, right here is everything that you will need to make buck jam. So um, I'll tell you uh, uh, the ingredient list and I'll put it in the description below and uh, but let's just walk through it and uh, I think you'll recognize most of this stuff if not I'll just explain what it is um, so uh, apple juice there's no explanation for that uh, you need two liters or approximately two quarts for this recipe um, next uh, we have just uh, common table salt um, this is a uh, one kilo bag, so about 2.2 pounds, so we need about half of that. So the recipe calls for about one pound of salt. Uh, icing sugar, um, baking sugar, uh, powdered sugar, there's a few different names this goes by. But it's basically icing sugar is the name everybody recognizes. Uh, this is a one kilo bag, or about 2.2 pounds, and you need half of the bag. Okay. The next ingredient, this will be very common, just one box of cherry jello. Um, if you want to make it cheaper, you don't need jello brand. I just couldn't find anything cheaper than that. I was literally trying to source the absolute cheapest ingredients um, I could find because it doesn't matter if you have good quality ingredients for this. The, the two key things are salt, sugar, and that apple. Um, scent or uh, wafting, flavoring, whatever you want to call it that's going to actually attract them to the lick. Okay, now the ingredient that most of you probably won't know or won't be as familiar with is Serto or also known as liquid uh, pectin. Um, basically it's what they put in jam to make it thick or jelly-like and uh, gelatin of course is another in the jello also helps with that but the serto is really what will make this into more of a thick syrup with the amount of liquid in this recipe um, it's not going to be thick like jam or marmalade it's going to be more of a syrup consistency and uh, the other thing we're going to need that I don't have shown here is two liters of water two quarts of water um, I've got our gallon jug or four liter uh, bottle that we're going to put the final product into. We've got the funnel so that uh, we can pour it from the pot into there and of course we got the spoon to mix it um, because we're going to have to cook this on the stove uh, or start with the hot water anyways on the stove, mix the ingredients in and uh, we'll show you that whole process here shortly. So. Anyway, that's it. Very basic ingredients. I will put the full recipe in the description below. Um, so at the end of the video, if you want to make this for yourself, uh, you can just go down there and check it out. I'll also put in some links to the actual uh, Buck Jam product we're trying to replicate. And uh, you can go check that out yourself as well if um, you want to kind of see uh, what you're buying from the store versus what this recipe is. But this recipe basically um, emulates that exact formula. So um, we'll talk about the costs after too, at the end of the video. It's uh, very interesting. I found what you would pay at the store versus what this actually costs to make. 
And uh, I should also mention too that um, basically to do a double batch, all I would really need is one more uh, jug of apple juice and one more box of Jello, and we could make a double batch because the rest of the quantities in this stuff, there's enough to actually do two batches. So we'll split uh, the sugar and the salt in half, and only one of the packs of uh, or one of the pouches of the liquid Serto. Uh, also, just to mention. Serto comes in powder or liquid. You want the liquid Serto uh, for this specific recipe. So I'm going to need four of these. Half a liter and I need two liters. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just bring this uh, water to a boil. It actually uh, doesn't need to boil, just uh, heat itself up, so... Um, or to get extremely hot, uh, basically... Um, when you make jello, you boil the water, same kind of idea. Okay, um, with the pot here is uh, not quite boiling, it's just below boiling, but that'll be hot enough. Like I mentioned before, we don't actually need it to be a uh, rolling boil. So I'm just gonna turn the heat off now. And I will just take the pot off the heat and we'll start adding the ingredients. First thing to go in the pot is our confectionery sugar or icing sugar. Uh, it's supposed to be one pound, so that's basically half this bag, so we'll go add that to the pot now. Feels like about half the bag there. Basically, we're making something that's sweet already, apple juice, even uh, super sweeter with a full pound of sugar. Stuff gets everywhere, I'm gonna have to figure that out here. Okay, the next thing we uh, add now is a pound of salt, and uh, just got that here. Um, I just bought the cheapest salt I could find. This is a two pound bag and uh, 67 cents Walmart. Like I mentioned before, you can just use the cheapest ingredients. You don't need high end uh, baking stuff or some brand name things. You're just looking for the raw ingredients. So we as well add half of this of salt. And if you wanted to, you could get real scientific and weigh this stuff and measure it out. I don't think there's any value in it, as long as it's uh, close enough. And like I mentioned before, it's probably better just to make a double batch, pour the whole bag in, but... So now we'll go ahead and stir this up and uh, we'll start adding the next ingredients. So at this point, uh, 
it's this real ugly, murky looking color. Just want to keep stirring this till it's fully dissolved. Okay, the next ingredient to go in is going to be cherry jello. Just going to dump that in. And uh, if you've seen buck jam in the store, uh, this is how it gets that uh, red uh, coloring. And uh, the cherry in the jello mix actually adds a bit to the um, scent and the flavor as well. So I'll go ahead and add that. And uh, I'll just mix this in. Just want to keep stirring all this stuff to make sure nothing's going to set a load on you. This is starting to give the uh, telltale um, color of. Uh, the buck jam you'd see in the store, it's that red syrupy color. Still fairly liquid, part of that's due to the heat and uh, part of that's due to we haven't added the serto which is like a thickening agent. Um, the jam, or the jello does have gelatin in it and if you put it in the fridge it would set up like jelly but it's so diluted with water at this point it won't ever make a jello and so much salt in here too I don't know if that would impact it, I imagine it would. Let's take a closer look though, this is uh, so you guys can see the color. That white frothing there, that was uh, came up after we put the uh, jello mix in. Don't exactly know what it is or if it'll go away, but it's kind of just foamy. Mix that around, but uh, that kind of looks like a big batch of cherry jello or a big batch of buck jam. So we'll keep stirring this, uh, make sure everything's well dissolved. I don't want any sugar or salt to come out of the mix at this point. Actually, I was surprised. This actually smells pretty good. Um, that uh, the, the, uh, with the amount of solids I've put in here, all that sugar and salt feel like it's completely dissolved at this point. I don't feel any granular bits on the bottom, so. Okay, let's uh, go at our next ingredient here. Well, last but not least, we got our apple juice. Put the whole thing in. Uh, just a little tip on the apple juice, buy a good container with a lid on it like this one. I know you can buy the um, kind of like those cardboard type containers um, that are relatively cheap too, like the Sunripe ones, but you want a, um, a good plastic container with the lid because as you can tell, all the solids and everything we put in there we've actually put four liters of liquid in and we've got almost five liters of product at this point and uh, we haven't even um, put in our last ingredient yet so you're gonna even though we've got like a gallon jug or four liter jug we're actually going to need more than that for the overflow because this will fill up that whole bottle plus some so I always get um, that extra uh, or the get the extra container or uh, get the apple juice container that will uh, handle any excess from this uh, batch that we're doing all right now it's time to uh, add our final ingredient the serto now this uh, box is supposed to have two packages of this yep 
and this is a liquid one. Make sure you don't get the powder. This you specifically need the liquid for this from all the research I did anyway. And this will help thicken it up to it'll be like a syrup. Right now this is pretty watery. And uh, you know the, gel the gelatin and the jello mixture isn't gonna do enough to thicken this up. So the syrup will, that's what this will do is help make it to thicker like jam. Stir that in. Just adding that, this thickened up almost instantly here. Actually, I can just I can actually feel it um, coagulated almost instantly, but it's still quite liquidy. Um, what you're really supposed to do is let this cool down before you pour it in the container. Um, but from my experience, whenever you're pouring something that's going to thicken up into a container, you're better off to do it while it's still relatively runny like this. So we'll let it cool down in the pot a little bit. Uh, the one guy that was telling me about this said he puts mixes everything in a five gallon pail, but I mean this is just easier to do it in a big pot over the stove to me anyway. And uh, I did take the liberty to have a little taste test of this. This smells ridiculously good, guys. I'll tell you that much. It smells like apple cherry. Like the scent is freaking unbelievably good. It actually smells like something you'd want to drink or eat or something. It's got a really good scent to it already. Um, but I did take a little taste of the liquid and uh, honestly I can't taste any sweetness in it. It tastes very 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 salty. So I think um, I think what the whole idea behind this is is you got this powerful scent attractant with the cherry jello and the apple juice and when they come and lick it and paw at it they get that salt which they really like and in nature sometimes it can be hard for them to find and uh, whether they can taste the sugar or not we put enough in there I don't know but uh, for sure the salt is very it's very salty and I've um, been reading a few articles too on uh, nuisance deer at campgrounds that basically have been become addicted to the confectionery stuff because people feed in chocolate bars and things like that and uh, they might not be able to taste the sugar, but uh, I guarantee you they are, they're getting a dopamine high off of it, especially if they haven't had um, high fructose uh, food sources like corn and whatnot. They'll lick this and get the salt that they want, but they'll also get a little kick of dopamine from the sugar and they'll keep coming back for more. So I think that's the whole idea behind this buck jam anyway. Like I said, this is supposedly the exact recipe for the stuff that you buy in the store. Very simple to make and uh, at the end of this video I'll talk about the costs of it. Alright, uh, so while we're waiting for the uh, uh, buck jam here to cool off so we can pour it into these uh, containers, um, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about uh, the cost of uh, making this versus uh, just buying a bucket of it at uh, Bass Pro or Cabela's or wherever you're um, normally buying this stuff from. And uh, it works out to roughly $15 for a gallon container at uh, Cabela's or Bass Pro where I'm from and that's in Canadian dollars. In the US it's about 10 uh, So 15 Canadian is about 12 US I think for uh, 4 liter or a gallon container of it. Uh, all of the ingredients on this 
and I did prorate um, like the Serto salt and the sugar because we can double batch it. So I just cut the cost of that in half. It works out to about seven dollars and eighty cents to make a batch um, from the fluid level that in the marker line in the pot. I think we're going to get about five five and a half liters, um, and that's roughly five five and a half quarts ballparkish. But we'll. Um, have uh, the full uh, gallon jug that I got plus half of this apple juice container filled back up if I don't spill any. So really that works out to, um, you know, the batch cost me seven eighty, dollars but uh, like the four liters or the gallon of this stuff that would be comparable to the store probably was about six six fifty dollars maybe to to make versus the 15 bucks to pay for it. So definitely worth making it um, if you're using any amount anyways. If it's not convenient to make it and you only need one jug and that's gonna last you a long time, you know, might as well just buy it versus go through all the hassle of making it and cleaning it up. But it's kind of fun to do this anyway. Um, now buck, uh, the buck jam, uh, this is the, I'm gonna call it the traditional one. Uh, with the uh, apple scent and flavoring and whatnot, but uh, the acorn batch, that one's slightly different. I'm kind of looking into how to make that at home. And uh, there's a few other scents too, like a licorice one, but I think the licorice one is more for bears and the blueberry one, which for sure is for the bear baiting, that are a little different. I assume it's less salt, more sugar um, in those mixtures, but um, if you guys are interested in this, uh, leave your comments below and uh, if you want to see how to make the acorn batch, if there's enough people interested, I'll go and um, make a batch, make a video on how to do that as well. So that'd be kind of fun. Um, I just like experimenting with this stuff. So uh, when we get back to the land, I'm actually going to be uh, making, I'm going to call it McDonald's Alley, but basically a bunch of uh, attracted stations and uh, down the strip, like it's kind of like a natural funnel on the property where I know a lot of wildlife goes. And I'm just gonna see which ones are the most effective because um, there's all kinds of commercially available ones. So I'm gonna try our homemade buck jam. I've got just regular salt, which is always, um, you know, the key thing, especially in areas where they have trouble finding salt. Uh, I think I'm gonna try I've got some of this uh, dough and estrus scent. I'm just going to try uh, putting some of those um, on a wafer as well as just a couple drops like on a log and, or on a piece of bark or fence post or something and see if, uh, I know it's not rut or anything, but just to see if that piques their curiosity and makes them stop to check it out. And uh, the other thing is too, we've got a variety of species like white-tailed mule deer, bear, elk, and I'm pretty sure there's a moose, I just can't prove it yet, but I've seen tracks that I'm 95% certain are moose. So um, I'm just curious what animals, like what uh, attractant, and uh, like I said, we're not hunting this property whatsoever. I'm more just curious to see what is kind of um, cruising through the land and, and uh, whatnot. And, you know, if they can have a little snack along the way, that's great. But uh, I don't think we actually have a huge uh, density of animals in the area because normally if you're like say baiting deer or putting out a track you'd have like a hundred different deer come into that and uh, everything I've seen on the trail camera pictures anyway there's been like two white tail does two or three elk and one bear like so it's hit or miss uh, I don't think they're all hanging around there to check this stuff out anyway but um, Anyway, we'll see. It's uh, I'm just kind of having fun now. I've uh, been reviving my uh, trail camera setups and stuff. So, anyways, enough rambling on here. Uh, let's go pour this in the containers. We'll do that over the sink. And um, anyways, I'm curious uh, if this is. I'm just gonna get one last stir before we pour it. But I'm curious if it's thickening up already. And I'm really curious to see if this is going to work. The scent coming off of this is unreal. I can smell it like everywhere in the house at this point. So 
I'm thinking that jello, um, that scent in the jello really um, made things pungent and wanted to come out. But anyways, let's go uh, pour it. All right, somehow I got a feeling this is a high potential for a big mess, so do the best we can here. The scent coming off of this is insane, like my mouth is watering, it smells so good. Okay, I think we'll call that jug full. Apple juice uh, container, I've rinsed that out too just to make sure it was just pure buck jam. It probably didn't matter, but. That's it. It's still uh, super liquidy, but I could tell it is thickening up a bit. So we got, if I wouldn't have spilt that other uh, bit of um, juice when we first started filling that, I would have had half a container for sure in here. This is almost half right now. So um, basically four, five liters of, uh, or five liters, five quarts roughly of uh, buck jam. Uh, what it'll do is uh, tomorrow, after this is completely cooled off to room temperature, still fairly warm, I'll swish this one around and see if it turned into any kind of syrup for us. So, anyways, uh, I'll get this mess cleaned up and uh, we'll uh, check this out tomorrow. Well, guys, it's been a couple days and uh, we let the jam uh, sit to set up. It uh, was liquid as could be, and then I got reading a bit more about jams and this and that and. Um, it said basically you have to have this stuff at a rolling boil for a couple minutes so I went and put it back in the pot I did the rolling boil but um, at the end of the day it's still pretty liquidy okay uh, let's take a look okay as you can see this is just juice it's not uh, syrupy in the least This jug's the same. It's just all juice. All right, as you can see, this is as liquid as any juice or water. Um, it smells incredibly good though, so I am going to uh, still put it out. We'll put the trail camera up. If uh, we get lots of um, uh, wildlife coming to check it out, I might try another batch. I'll try doing it a bit differently. I'll maybe try to make the syrup and then go and add the salt after. I don't know if the salt's affecting it uh, setting up properly, but uh, anyways, uh, let's go and get this stuff put out.
Well guys, I don't know if the buck jam worked, but it definitely didn't hurt.